This is Mushrooms! My name's Tom, and in 2019, I quit my job to start growing mushrooms in my garage. Boutique mushroom farms have been opening up all around the world, offering customers a local selection when buying fresh mushrooms. These boutique mushroom farms generally produce between about 20 to 200 kilos per week and will service a smaller geographic area. At Oak and Spore, we are one of these boutique type mushroom farms and we service the small area of Christchurch in New Zealand. We grow upwards of about 50 kilos per week of which we sell to local customers. These boutique mushroom farms generally use sawdust or wood pellets to grow mushrooms. So basically I turn these guys here into these guys here. To make the substrate that oyster mushrooms love to eat, we first get organic softwood fuel pellets and soy hulls. We mix these two ingredients together, ideally into a biodegradable bag, then add water to get the right moisture content. So we have prepared our 20 bags. These have been prepared with our soy hulls, our wood chips and our water to get them to the correct moisture content. The next step is to get them into our homemade steriliser, which you can just see over in the corner there, my big silver drum. And we're going to uh, sterilise these to kill any uh, competing bacteria or perhaps mould that uh, might be in there. So here we are in our clean room. This is quite possibly the most important part of the process of small scale mushroom farming. So I wheeled our drum into here. Now that's had a few days to cool down because the substrate in there got to about 95 degrees Celsius um, and it's had to have time for that substrate to cool back down to sort of around the room temperature. In this room, it's a very small room, we have in front of us what is called a uh, flow hood. Now this flow hood is a blower which blows air through two uh, HEPA filters and what that does is cleans all the contamination or most of the contamination out of the air. So we can now work with these bags in here with a very low chance of bacteria or mould getting into those bags and are growing. Now this should mean that our mycelium will be the only organism in that bag and that gives it the best chance to move through and start consuming all that substrate. So we're going to get this flow hood turned on now and we're going to leave it for about 30 minutes to just clean some of the air in this room so there's uh, not a lot of dust flying around. The next step is to choose the type of mushroom you want. Today we're going to use Phoenix Oyster. This here is a bag of Phoenix Oyster spawn and what it is is a whole lot of grain which has had mushroom mycelium grown all over it. We will introduce scoops of this into our bags of sterile substrate. Space 
cowboy on the other hand He was a pirate A predator with a tail The true princess was his next meal So we have inoculated all our bags now. As you can see here, there is a layer of grain above all our sterile substrate. What I'm going to do now is, is break this substrate up with my hand and mix in this grain into the substrate. And that should hopefully disperse it evenly um, uh, in there. That's going to speed up the colonization time of the mycelium. And in about two weeks, maybe a little more, we should have a bag that's ready to grow mushrooms. So all our bags have been inoculated and we've shifted them out here to our incubation room. This room sits at about uh, 21 to 22 degrees at all times and that provides a really good temperature for that um, mycelium to, um, to move through the substrate and start consuming it. And after about two weeks, these um, whole bags will start turning white as that um, mycelium fully colonises it. So we'll get the lights off in here, we'll get these young guys to bed and we'll come wake them up in about two weeks. After about seven days, the bags will start looking like this. You can actually see where that mycelium is moving through that substrate. Shh, check this out. These are our mushroom blocks that we put in here two weeks ago. As you can see, the mycelium has moved through the substrate nicely and fully colonised these bags. So we'll shift them through to our fruiting chamber now. We'll open up a small hole in the side and we should get a nice lovely bouquet of fresh mushrooms out of each one of these. <laughs> So we have shifted our bags here from our incubation room into our fruiting chamber here. Now this is the room we were going to uh, grow the mushrooms in. Now a fruiting chamber must have four important things. It must have a temperature between a certain range. It must have a very high humidity. You must have uh, lights in the room which are of a certain spectrum. And you must have a low CO2 parts per million in the room. So most mushroom fruiting chambers that people use, they control all four of these aspects in them. Now if we open up our mushroom bags to the environment which we create inside this room, these mushroom bags will start producing the mushrooms we want from them. Now to get them to start growing their mushrooms, all we do is we go to the face of each bag and we cut a small hole in it about that big. Some people make a slit, I like to cut a little hole. And where that that mycelium and substrate hits the fresh air and the humidity over the face of it, that exposed mycelium, it will start growing its mushrooms. And after about one week of having that small area exposed, we should go from this to this. So these are all bags I put in here exactly one week ago today. And you can see they've all got beautiful bundles of mushrooms hanging off the front of them. So today, after I finish this wall here, I'm going to go and harvest all these ready mushrooms. Some of them are ready now, some of them will be ready tomorrow morning. The space cowboy was nothing more than an interstellar incubus, enticing all that ended the wreckage of his star cruiser. But the June princess had powers beyond his control, and she banished the space cowboy now. So that is the process of growing mushrooms from start to finish. 
Now we still have one more thing to do to really be successful in this, and that's actually sell our mushrooms. So we're going to load up our van here with all our mushrooms, we're going to take them down to the local market, and we're going to see just how many sales we can get. So we are done at the market. Today I made $730. I like to sell my mushrooms in trays of $10 and $20. On a good day, we can do $1,000 at that market. So 730 is pretty good for us. We do like a bit more, but we're happy with 730. Growing mushrooms is fun and challenging, and if you've never done it before, I recommend you try it at home. You never know, it could be your new career.